ब्लैक का व्हाइट मिक्स हो रहा है कम क्लोज व्हाइट का व्हाइट पूरा दोनों जन व्हाइट व्हाइट है यार देख ना सेंटा चलो सेंटा सेंटा बोलो सर सामने डिस्कशन इज गोइंग टू बी वॉट हैपन्स इन रियल लाइफ एन ए जर्नलिस्ट हैव टू वर्क ऑन इन्वेस्टिगेटिव स्टोरीज वॉट इन्वेस्टिगेटिव जर्नलिज्म इज ऑल अबाउट एंड हाउ कनु हैज मेड एन अटेम्प टू ब्रिंग आउट दैट फैक्ट थ्रू मनोज बाजपेई on the screen so many things we all day to day work i want to now call upon our what do i say should i call them colleague or should i call them uh, hum sathi or whatever so i have uh, gautam mengli the senior most who has worked extensively in crime and investigation a guy whom i know personally for a very long time 16 long years of his career he has put in doing journalism he knows in and out of what happens in the crime world he knows what happens in the cyber world he knows exactly what happens inside and outside the police station and he is also author of some of the interesting books so when you guys get time do get the books that he has written you will really have some insight and maybe kanu can have next idea coming in from his book <laughs> so uh, i have dev kotak who happened to be a colleague within midday though i have never met him in person so i'll be meeting him in person from time uh, from the india today group and aaj tak and kan the third one the last person i have to look for the name yesha sorry Yesha Kotak uh, from uh, CNN News 18, please. So myself Vinod Kumar Menon, I am the editor special investigations with Midday. I have been uh, asked to be uh, the moderator for the evening, and I have taken up that task on myself. So I'll be asking some straight questions to the actors, who are the actor, the director, and my colleagues here. So. we'll start yeah you require one so mr kanu this question goes to you what inspired you to delve into the world of investigative journalism through dispatch yeah <clears throat> so i'll have to go back a little bit to i would say around 2016 when i had by then i had finished the key and i had written agra and i was trying to finance agra and while that process was going on i was thinking about you know what to do next because financing a film as you know is a long process <clears throat> and around that time we were beginning to see some sort of upheaval in the world of journalism especially in the world of crime journalism uh, we we all heard about gauri lankesh and and uh, you know uh many other journalists i mean there are there is too long a list actually to name uh the people but it all more or less started with gauri lankesh and once that happened i was i remember being very very disturbed uh with that incident and i started thinking about what this world entails and what this world is about uh 
so from the outside the pull was to do a film about the world of crime journalism but also i felt like most often films that are about this world you know they end up being too much about plot story kisne kya kiya ye kiya kyun kiya but what i along with my co-writer ishani banerji when we started discussing this idea what we started finding really curious was that both of us felt and the more we did our research and talk to people around both of us felt that you know the the world is such now that you do not know kisne kya kiya pata chalna hi bahut mushkil hai you know it's becoming a very very foggy world so that idea started exciting us that why are films like this not seen through that lens when that is closer to the real world that we live in and so with that the idea of exploring a more you know troubled uh, gray faustian character piece from the inside where you look at this journalist as a human being not just as a journalist jo subah uthke journalist banke office chala jata hai hum sab insaan hote hain so we really wanted to see the human side of this guy and set it in this foggy world that we were uh, starting to observe manoj this is for you uh, what are known for the kind of character that you get into when it comes to movie uh want to know before you said yes to kanu for this uh, film uh, you have a lot of friends in journalism did you try to touch base with them to understand how the industry work or what is the life of a journalist i have many friends in delhi so um typically what happens that for me i have been an actor who works in theater when i was doing theater i had too many journalist friends um for for some reason or or the other for some compulsion or the other you know the basic comp- compulsion like where, where am i going to get my next food from so there used to be one journalist in s- some publication uh, that used to be our safe bet you know going to his uh, office and trying to find food from okay so uh, many i mean rajesh joshi is someone who was very very active those days and so many others so this is the world that i was very much familiar with and i'm still friends with them so whenever i go back back to delhi if i'm having a screening so the most of the audience members are journalists okay journalism and investigative journalism do alag cheez hoti hai ji bilkul to jab aap journalist se baat kar rahe hain aur aapko us role mil raha hai investigative journalist ka to iske bare mein kuch pata laga aapko ji bilkul jaisa maine bataya rajesh joshi ya unke tarah ke bahut sare jo journalist friends hain unke sath ye film milne ke baad meri lagatar baat hoti rahi और वो आ, किसी भी देखिए एक जर्नलिस्ट जब स्क्रिप्ट के बारे में सुनता है आ, उसके एक्टर से तो उसका क्यूरियस क्यूरोसिटी ये होता है कि व्हाट आर वी शोइंग आर वी गोइंग टू बी ट्रू टू द टू द टू द रियल लाइफ और इज इट जस्ट अ मेन स्ट्रीम फिल्म दैट वी आर मेकिंग अबाउट अ जर्नलिज्म देन एंड मेनी ऑफ देम वर अवेयर ऑफ अबाउट कनूज फर्स्ट फिल्म एंड मेनी ऑफ देम वर नॉट अवेयर अबाउट some of them who were aware about it they also knew what kind of film it is going to be so they were helping me in in you know in that direction but some of them who were not aware about his films they always took it as uh, you know as a matter of fun oh ho to jaldi hero banega you know so that so they were, they were always very suspicious or apprehensive about what kind of film i'm we are going we are going to put it up on the screen but you know that happens so you try to get your matter out of them and their experience for me every time the the one question that i have always asked each and every one day, when you are getting out and getting into the field uh is it stopping anywhere or not stopping anywhere with the investigative journalists and they said that uh, and that was such a fantastic thing that one of the journalist friends said that a journalist who is doing a regular journalism for him the the day stops for investigative journalist it doesn't stop it may be 12 o'clock it may be 2 2 o'clock it may be uh, you know uh, he is sleeping in the daytime or working in the night time he is getting into an area which he himself is not uh, Uh, very much familiar with he also he knows about the risk but he he is also someone who is who is adrenaline also running because of that risk Quite okay interesting so yeah. to uh, ask that question and take it forward we have gautam here who has um, worked as investigative journalist 
So can you put some light on to what Manoj is saying? Like, you know, for a regular journalist, the day may get over at 6 or 7 or 10 o'clock or whatever. But for the investigative journalist, that may not be the case. So if you turn it and then I can move on. I do. I do agree. Yes, of course. Uh, but I would also say it's true about a lot of crime reporting that we do. Uh, crime reporters don't, don't look at the clock because crime does not look at the clock. And what we also don't realize is that, you know, there was a phase when investigative reporting became synonymous with hidden cameras and hidden mics and uh, we somewhere lost the sight of the fact that a lot of investigative reporting and you would know this better than anybody else is just pounding the pavement going from office to office door to door trying to get access to people to files to get a double confirmation triple confirmation and then at the end of the day you reach home you have no personal life you uh, are tired, but you still have that one file you got half an hour ago. You have to sit with it because tomorrow there's a, there's a reporter's meeting in office. And uh, uh, I think that is what has come out very well. I, I saw the film and that has come out very well in, in the film. And I do really admire the fact that it takes away from the entire hidden camera uh, trope and tries to go beyond that because uh, they will agree, Yesha will agree that a lot of investigative stuff that is like sitting and going on the internet and searching. I remember this one uh, case I was tracking about uh, an Indian who had gone missing in Kenya and purely through some uh, internet research techniques I was able to track down a man, if you remember the man in Kenya who was feeding me all the documents from the Kenyan court. I did not think of it as investigative reporting at that time, but everybody who read that story said it's good investigative reporting. You trace this man's movements from Mumbai to Kenya till the time he was allegedly abducted by the police in Kenya, sitting in Mumbai. There are so many sides to it which we don't realize in day-to-day -day life. But yes, the clock or the time of festivals or occasions or birthdays do not matter in this field. Yeah, that's mostly what we found in our research also. It's more human intelligence. Human jisko bolte hai. It's more human intelligence than anything else. I would also just uh, reveal this one little fact that uh, Ishani is a friend and I was one of the people she met uh, during her research phase. Yeah, we And the uh, press club terrace is where we met and you've recreated that quite well in the in the film, I must say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we, we, we spoke at length about that. So, Dave, if you can throw some light about uh, since uh, you started your career uh, at a time when the underworld as such was not active, you missed that opportunity. What uh, Kanu had tried to show and Manoj was looking out for till the end. Uh, but uh, can you throw some light about the way you could pursue the kind of cases that you came across at that time? Yeah. Uh, so the time when I uh, made inroads or rather entered into the journalism space, uh, that time Mumbai police would say that Mumbai police walo ne uh, underworld ki kamar ya peet tod di hai. So because I'm a 90s born kid, so it's but obvious I want it to come, but now I can't want crime on the streets for my personal gains. <laughs> Uh, but also at that time there was a new sort of hidden terrorist that was coming up which we know as the name of cyber crime because uh, these are faceless criminals uh, who use the help of technology and an entire cyber hub infrastructure is being created in villages where you know 10th uh, dropout kids, 11th dropout kids or much younger than that also. Uh, in fact, when I talk to cops now, they say Jamtara is over. Abhi Rajasthan is the new growing Jamtara. So Jharkhand they are done with. True. So I came in at a very interesting time when uh, there was rather a confluence of a lot of uh, street crimes, narcotics related crimes and the emergence of a cyber crime. So I am in a very uh, uh, exciting phase where I also have a lot of other uh, challenging things to do which is also one very interesting thing I uh, figured out about the Mumbai police is that because I only kept observing. So most of the work is done uh, by the cops who are not in uniform. We know them as detection officials or in Marathi as they call it, Gunem uh, Prakatikaran uh, Kaksh Adhikari. So uh, most of these people work in the dead end of the police station uh, where in Mumbai language they say Todpani happens, where all the conviction and confessing of the crime and all of that happens. So I asked them, I said, sir, you every time for the meeting. Ke liye. लेकिन इन्फॉर्म भी नहीं करते आप खुद कहीं मुंबई के बाहर चले जाते हो तो मसला क्या है सो दे लाइक देव झारखंड में आई सेड हर टाइम पूछता हूं वहीं होते हो क्या है उधर सो दैट्स व्हेन आई फर्स्ट फिगर्ड आउट दैट मुंबई पुलिस इज स्पेंडिंग अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम आउटसाइड मुंबई टू ट्रेस दीस पीपल एंड नाउ बिकॉज़ साइबर क्राइम हैज मैसिवली 
grown or multiplied many fold uh, which is why they have a separate cyber wing that has been created and at also at a police station level the regular detection guys are different now from the newly constituted cyber detection team which is what i said it related, IT related crimes related. are growing so okay. of course they need for that so yasha uh, you started with uh, television <laughs> now because they and gautam and myself had the print background we have the luxury of investigating working cross verifying but you jumped into an era of breaking news <laughs> now tell me when you do that breaking uh, you have very little time in hand uh, to check whether it the source is giving you the correct information because you also have a chance of libel and defamation suit coming in and moreover forget about the bambu that your boss would give you so if you can throw some light about how challenging your experience was as a television news journalist uh, thank you sir so basically i of course jumped in in the crime and the investigative space when i got it in tv but before that i spent a couple of years on working in newspaper just like all of you all so that helped me build my own experience now because i know that i come from print so i have to carry that liability Of course, defamation. I think as journalists, all of us know. If you have defamation notice, then you are doing something right. That's why defamation notice has come. So I think all of us have gotten defamation notices, and so have I. But yes, TV is altogether different ball game for an investigative journalist. It takes a lot of time. It will take us months, weeks, and that whole space in TV where there should be a dedicated investigative journalist who would spend weeks and months and not be questioned by their boss, so that you know they can just be on field, talk to like. 10 officers 20 officers 100 officers and get those documents that leave we do not have in tv anymore you have to juggle your everyday routine breaking so much so that i have just been giving a breaking on cm and i've come here <laughs> so uh, that is how it is for all of us we juggle that and then like you already mentioned there's no time for us it's any time in the day True. so after that work of yours is where you get in that investigative space and of course you know it's it's more about cross like we all of us do cross check recheck whatever and as of now in today's journal space if we know most of the stories or such investigative pieces are planted so that they can be used for their own benefit and in that one needs to really know how you juggle and manage and how much do you trust that source of yours how so long do you, you trust that you want to add something on to it yeah no i actually i have a question for oh, yeah, uh, because yeah, the yeah. the discussion is so interesting so before, now before i uh, give that opportunity uh, one of the thing that people especially like you know and maybe other audience also may have the similar question this movie dispatch is it based on fiction or a biopic or a reality how do you put that like because uh, when you look upon the uh, movie you find some similarities but at the same time you are not revealing too many things so if you can throw that light if it is a uh, fiction or if it is a story based on her reality <clears throat> i think what we found out very quickly during our writing process was that is tarah ki film ko किसी एक कैरेक्टर या किसी एक इंसान पे बेस करना प्रॉब्लमैटिक uh, होगा बिकॉज द वर्ल्ड द फ्लक्स इन दिस वर्ल्ड इज सो ह्यूज नाउ एंड देर आर सो मेनी स्टोरीज अबाउट सो मेनी थिंग्स दैट आर हैपनिंग दैट इट विल बी अनफेयर टू डू जस्ट अ वन स्टोरी बिकॉज एज आई सेड इन द बिगिनिंग फॉर अस वेरी क्विकली द फिल्म बिकेम not about the case but about the people inhabiting this universe so research karte karte itne sare logo se baat karte karte it has become an amalgam of everything that is happening around us true true you wanted to ask yeah i actually <laughs> wanted to ask all of you this question because it's so interesting uh, picking up from what you were asking that uh, crime journalist ki life kabhi never stops now i want to take us in further into that territory where i want to ask you guys all of you that uh, at what point do you stop inside a story you know how far does a story does every story go to its culmination also because during my research i heard that journalists crime journalists specifically end up not doing more stories than they end up doing so connected to that and while you're working on a story do you stop at any point and if you do then why and when and yeah yeah so please start so like you rightly said at times a lot of stories that we pursue they do not lead you to some place like you know you could get one bit of information but there will be no way you can actually cross verify that and then it will be detrimental 
in the larger interest to pursue that kind of a story and some stories you know like you know from your gut that okay this is it and this is where the story ends and that's how you put it further also i think it's also a lot to do with the editorial requirement like you know i might have a story in my hand but then i will require as a television reporter to have two victims like we talk about cyber crime right so i would have had to have two victims who will substantiate that story so i can show it on air it's much easier to write but to show it on air it's much difficult so only if i get that two victims i get that four victims i get those four lawyers who have that expertise on it then my story goes further otherwise my story lies down there because it may be an absolute amazing story given by one of the officers given by one of the lead saying this is what the next generation crime is you can write it down but you cannot show it on air so how do i do then the story lies down there hello yeah yeah uh, since you asked uh, where to stop uh, firstly uh, you know there can't be a one size fits all approach uh, some stories uh, lead you to the end some stories you realize that you're hitting a dead end right in the middle only so but there can't be a substitute to not trying at all but of course uh, uh, as you spend more years in the industry you also tend to develop a sense of judgment and you chalk out a mental map okay this story is not worth it this story i could really pursue it you know there will be uh, some stories which you will realize later that it is rubbing a lot of people the wrong way or the wrong side for which they will reach out to your top management owners editor in chiefs etc whatever so those are also the kind of uh, possibilities but uh, i'd say personally that i think it's purely based on sense of judgment uh, over the years because you keep doing stories so you, you really know what you as a journalist can also have access to in terms of police officials uh, bureaucrats uh, uh, victims in some cases uh, some journalists even manage to reach out to the accused who are probably inside the jail or are out on bail or reach out to their families so of course there are multiple elements so even after that kind of hard work uh, i'd say to not get discouraged if it doesn't really take you anywhere i mean even in your case you might realize that okay i'm writing a story i'm uh, going with the flow but if i'm not really giving it an interesting end or something worthwhile then i think creatively it's also going to dissatisfy you so that's something also that really happens with us as journalists that sometimes of course you know the end is going to be good but us process ke dauran maza nahi aaya and you don't want to be telling yourself that of course you'll you get because you are a part of that profession so ultimate happiness will come but as you are going with the flow wo tum ek drag ke tarike se kar rahe ho ya ekdam maza leke anand ke sath roz excitedly you are meeting your new sources you are talking to people and there will be days on end where you will also not get nothing out of it but you also have to uh, have the policy of wait and watch because this is an entirely wait and watch uh, approach game lot of how do you look up on this question what kanu had So you would have had a different experience altogether of having put that end at somewhere because you have been working on that investigative story for a good time, especially the Kenya story, like where you are not in India, you are not in Bombay, and you still have to have like you know because the time uh, changes, uh, the variation. Yeah. So how did uh, you pass through that uh, phase of your journalistic uh, days? So I'm still in touch with all the sources I made in Kenya. If we are talking about only that case, and we are still we still talk, but. now it's in the court and it's not really going much further so i am just waiting i'm not stopped but by and large uh, what i have observed is that the governing factor is reader interest or the not not what they will find interesting but in terms of their interest being served in terms of are we informing them about something that they need to know so you might start an investigation into a story and you might go on for 2 months and then you may realize that i can go on for 3 months more but it will take more time it will take more resources but at the end of the day am i doing it for my own ego or am i drawing a line here saying okay i have enough right now to tell the reader that this is what is wrong with the system and you deserve to know so the filter that a lot of us apply over here is that okay itna info hai five people have confirmed it i have got one person on record at least reacting to it let's put it out uske baad mein others might reach out saying ki mere sath bhi ye hua hai and we can take it forward so sometimes you just have to take a call so there is like they said there is no one size fits all solution for this it's a judgment call but uh, sometimes the stopping is not strictly voluntary also it is out of your hand 
uh, there was a case in in Mumbai. I was with the Hindu at that time uh, when uh, there was a betting racket busted and a very uh, recently big figure was arrested. And I managed to get his photo and some info on his background. I put it out and I wake up to an email from uh, Canada, from freelance investigative journalist. It only has a the subject line says you might find this interesting and there's a photo of this man with another man who's an even larger figure in the betting world in a hotel in Dubai. He's getting yeah. some interest. There, there is no signature at the end of it. There is only one email ID. It's a proton mail ID. I have no idea who it is. But I take it to the investigating officer. He confirmed it. Okay, this is the man. And this is the man we are looking at. Because we know they are in touch. Then I went into who the man is. But nobody was talking. For nearly two weeks, nobody was talking. Till it was conveyed to me that the order was here. That there is no need to go outside. There is no need to go outside. But I still had the photo and I still had the confirmation. So I ran that story. I did put it out that this guy who you think is a Mumbai-based bookie actually has those links abroad. It served the purpose at the time. So, uh, I mean, we're going to come to the phase eventually where we see true, is there true. pressure to stop. The pressure is sometimes very subtle. Yeah. It's overt and... Uh, but that's also the hint yeah. that, you know, yeah. don't cross that exactly. in line. Because it hints are, hints are always the, more, uh, like they're yeah. subtle, they are not expressed in many words. Uh, at the Hindu, if you remember, Josie Joseph had come yeah, down yeah, with yeah, that true, entire true. pen drive full of uh, transcripts of uh, intercepts of calls between the underworld and a lot of people who yeah. are here in, in India. And our job was to substantiate every page of those transcripts. A lot of people said, why are you doing this? Don't do this. There's no benefit in it. Every day we would go out with one page to confirm, don't do this, don't do this. Then there were calls to the office, there were legal notices that went on for nearly two months. So, yeah, so you know, since you wanted me to talk about my experience, um, journalism, according to me, is madness. It's a passion. You need to have the fire in your belly to go extra mile to get the story. Because if you have a story and end of the day, you come back to the editor and say, like, may work out to a, you have to actually cut a story figure because you feel guilty about it. End of the day. I had a classic example way back in 2014, a psychiatrist who ran a rehab, he came to me and met me in my office and he was quite disturbed. He told me, Vinod, I have young boys and girls who are coming to my rehab today and there's a new drug in the market. So I was quite interested to know what is this drug about. So he said, a cocaine which would cost you 1200 rupees for a gram, there's a new one called mephedron or meow meow, which is for 100 rupees. Now, the interesting thing is, you can place an order online and it can be delivered directly to your doorstep. So, my challenge was, when I went and met the Narcotic Control Bureau Joint Director, he said, sorry, we are helpless. I said, why are you helpless? The act is there. You can go and nab these people. He said, we have no such provision under the law where this mephedron is mentioned. Understand it, it's not opium which is cultivated. It's not opium which is cultivated. This is synthetic drug which is made in the laboratory. And the laboratory could be anywhere. It could be next door. You don't know. But that mephedron is available. Now understand, narco-terrorism is a concern that most of the law enforcing agencies were having. You don't have to come and carry out a bomb blast or you don't have to carry out a terror act. The best way to erode the country is to target the youth of the country. Make them addicted. So unlike a cocaine, which will make you to sit in one corner of the room once you take it, and as you, as the impact of the drug comes down, you will be more silent and you may go to sleep. This was completely reversed in Meow Meow or Mephidron. The moment the impact starts coming down in your blood system, you want to have it more. If you don't get it, you turn aggressive. And believe me, you are compelled to steal in the house. You are compelled to visit the red light area because your sexual urges go up. When I met these boys, they were from all affluent families, including girls. All from good families, all were still in college days. And a boy who was in, his, in class 7 or 8, on to drugs already, and on meow meow. So when I met these people, they had a different story to talk about and I'm seeing like 
how can the law enforcing agency say that they are helpless because the provisions are not there in the act? And at the same time, I wrote that article. There were uh, youngsters who were working with good advertising agencies. They were uh, students from good South Bombay colleges who started lying, who were addicted, and they did not know themselves whether they were having cocaine or whether they were having a new uh, drug, which is similar to cocaine. Now, when the problem started, there were guys who would watch porn throughout the night, throughout the day, they would lock themselves inside the house and the parents would wonder what is happening. Examination results, when it would come, the guys who would otherwise stop the class, they started failing in the examination. They started stealing in the house. They started lying to their parents and overall health started deteriorating. So luckily, one of my friends who was with the central agency, he was in Delhi and he came down to meet me. He was keen to know what is happening around in the city. So when I expressed my concern about this youth getting addicted and the helplessness of the law enforcing agency because the provisions of law is not there to cover this menace of laboratory drug. And for laboratory drug, believe me, Kanu, it's very simple, Manu. You will also agree. You have to change the molecule. Change karna hai. Aap se badhiya jo hai na, if police is working on one angle, those who are running the cartel or the syndicate, they will look out for alternative to come up and crack the business area. So the police will always be helpless when they come, till they come to know what is happening around. And when they know that is happening, they are still helpless because the law do not allow you to take action. Also, when Mephedronas finally made a banned drug under the Narcotics Act, that amendment was made when we didn't even have field testing kits now, to this confirm. Was, this is very interesting. So when I told you that, like, you know, the guy from Central Agency had met me, he said, like, this is very dangerous, we have never heard of it, so let me put up to the authorities. Up. At the same time, the government here also took up the uh, case uh, themselves. They also wrote to the centre saying that there need to be an enactment in the NDPS Act Subsequently, we wrote an article in the month of April 2014. Second article was on December 31st because the entire agencies were working as to what to be done if you are getting nabbed under this act. So, finally, February, uh, first or second week, the centre passed an act within the NDPS Act, Section 3, sub clause 1 was introduced wherein mephedron was made as a banned drug. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. But uh, until then, uh, Mumbai's mephedrone queen, uh, Shashikala Baby Patankar, had run riot for almost a decade. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Because the NDPS Act was not a provision. All the people were helpless. And the name of MD was a white substance. And the people were placebo. And the people were not pure. They were just glass particles. You're supposed to like, snort it like, in, in a cocaine format. और उसमें लोगों के नॉस्ट्रल्स फट रहे हैं क्योंकि उसमें भी प्योरिटी नहीं है लैब से कुछ भी जो भी कचरा आ रहा है वो मिक्सचर करके मार्केट में बच्चों को हुक ऑन करवाने के लिए ट्रू दे लेकिन इसमें नार्को टेररिज्म की जब बात हो रही है तो आप देखिएगा यू आर गेटिंग ए जॉम्बी इफेक्ट यू आर ऑन द मिडल ऑफ द रोड ऑन योर सुपर बाइक सडनली लाइक यू नो यू फील लाइक ए जॉम्बी इज कमिंग आउट ऑफ द पेट्रोल टैंक इल्यूशन बट वन डेकेड लेटर थिंग्स हैव नॉट चेंज्ड आई विल से बिकॉज़ यू आर स्पीकिंग आउट सिंथेटिक ड्रग मोर रिसेंटली जस्ट a couple of months back, I did a story. I think all of us know about black cocaine now. Yeah. And black cocaine is another synthetic drug. It cannot be detected anywhere. Which is where after a couple of rounds of stories by all of us, NCB officers had to get in dogs who could sniff and make a difference. And now we have dark net where all of these synthetic drugs, there's not only black. In my investigation, I found that there's a pink cocaine, pink there's a green cocaine, there's a yellow cocaine. All of them are synthetic drugs. And we will have, we will, we will have a separate <laughs> session on drugs and narcotics. <laughs> now, coming back to the movie and coming back to Manoj, I want you to ask, tell this. As an actor, what are the ethical dilemmas you have had to face in your journey? Ethical in what sense? Ethical when it comes to, like, this is right, that you are going to prison and you are going to prison and you are going to prison and you are going to prison. Or you are going to prison and you are going into the area where you want to go and write about that. Oh, ethically... The, the uh, whole thing, the, the joy in that journey yeah. in the film, if you look at it. <laughs> you know, for me, it was... Uh, it was a... When, when I was reading this script, uh, I was far more conscious and far more uh, apprehensive, far more uh, nervous as to how I'm going to do. Also, I knew one thing that Kanu uh, Behel is someone who will like to get into the darkest of the area. 
uh, of of the character, and I I was I wouldn't say I was prepared for it, but yes, I was in the process of preparing myself uh, much more emotionally and internally for the journey, looking at at his own at Kanu's reputation. Uh, it was it was as you said, put it very rightly. There was an eth ethical dilemma and the conflict that one was going through. Uh, never once I felt that you know uh, what audience will think. I was more worried about the family and the friends, you know, because uh, this is this is very new for a, for an Indian actor. If you look at it, it's a very very new thing, uh, and that too for an actor who is who is. Who's, who knows, already worked for three decades in, in cinema. So that came, uh, I was uh, grappling with that kind of a question, yeah. those kind of apprehension, nervousness. But never once it bothered me so much that, you know, I sit with him and I discuss that. It didn't bother me uh, that extent. Okay. It was all internal, internal fight that I was fighting with my own self. It never felt necessary to have that discussion with my director because it was not that urgent that I felt. So, Manoj, my next question that comes in is like, do you think there's a comparison that you can differentiate between an actor and a journalist? Especially in this movie because you are playing the role of a journalist yeah. and an investigative journalist. So, if you can throw light on that. Comparison between the actor and, actor the, character. and the character. And the character. Yeah, absolutely. I think we are, we, uh, we are in a country where Actors are always mistaken as the character, right? Or the vice versa. Uh, and uh, whatever you do on the screen, people don't think that, you know, it's the character that he's been playing. They start thinking that, you know, he is the same guy and he also has the same kind of a vice or the flaws. So we are all, so we are still, because we are so much used to watching mainstream cinema and we like mainstream cinema, we... We, we are the country who like to say that, you know, leave your brain at home and then come and watch the film. And I, my only question is why to leave your brain to go anywhere? <laughs> you know, that's too much of a risk. One thing is that I can't leave my brain outside. That's not possible physically. But also why should I leave my whole wisdom and intelligence and education that, that I have worked so hard on? Uh, and and now, now you ask me to leave it behind. No. So... In this kind of a country, uh, uh, there is always a chance of being mistaken as uh, the character itself. So there is, people never take this, this profession as that serious, you know, because of the mainstream dominance. Uh, that, uh, now look at uh, all the big stars and look at the followers, how they tweet about them, in favor of them, you know. They start, uh, there is a, there's a, a Twitter gang, you know. Uh, am I right? So there are armies. tweets, yeah, armies and Twitter gangs uh, really fighting with each other for that particular actor. They never talk about the character right, that these stars have been playing. So this is the, the that risk is always there. Actually, the that is risk that we always do a film with all all that risk you know, that people are going to mistake you as a, as, as as a character. Kano, you want to add something? I have a yeah, question for let, you. Let me tell you one yeah, thing. Please, I mean, yeah. the the few of the scenes that I have done. Let me let me uh, tomorrow. If I if if my audience or or the people are offended by any act of my mind in real life, they will always start making those scenes viral and telling people that this is this is what the character of Manoj Bajpayee.